for me, this is more about what has happened to George Groves. Now, let me tell you what I think when I talk about George Groves pre the Rebras and pre the Dublin fight. I think Groves is a very exciting, very dynamic, very dangerous boxer. He carries very, very good speed, huge power, and is very tactically versatile. Let's remember the James DeGale fight. Very, very close fight between two top, top super middleweights. George Groves is effective for large periods of that fight, fighting on his back foot. Smart tactical game plan, back foot boxing, defensively capable, athleticism, movement, agility. Then look at the Paul Smith fight. We see Groves get rid of Paul Smith early by being brutal, aggressive, powerful. In the Frotz fight, we see George Groves' boxing pedigree. We see him counter-punching. We see him making Frotz miss. We see the force of the Groves punch in only the first round where he floors iron chin Carl Frotz with a huge, huge punch. He looked a very versatile fighter, equally skilled on his back foot and on his front foot. Speed, agility, power, he's got so many attributes. Concerns did exist about his stamina late in a fight. Concerns did exist about his chin from the Kenny Anderson and Carl Frotz fights. But overall, you're looking at one of the most exciting prospects out there, post the Carl Frotz saga. For my eyes, um, you know, a real, real capable fighter. Now, what we've seen in the Rebras and Dublin fights for me shows something of a regression from George Groves. Gone is the sort of movement, gone is the tactical versatility seemingly gone is the devastating punching power these guys have made George Groves look European level they haven't been terrible wins but he hasn't looked good against them let's say Rebras is a similar level of opponent to Paul Smith possibly a lesser opponent than Paul Smith but Groves looked world class when he took Paul Smith out early. In these recent fights, we haven't seen the back foot technique he used against De Gale. We haven't seen the ambush counter punching technique that he used against Carl Frotz. We haven't seen his speed, his jab, his power, his movement. What we've seen typically is Groves getting involved in scrappy fights. You know, fighting at close quarters with limited opponents like Rebras, like Dublin. Um, he really hasn't looked special, he hasn't looked dynamic, he's looked one-dimensional. He hasn't shown different facets to his game. It's almost like his fights have been taking place in a phone box, you know, he's, he's been up close, not using any of his attributes. This Dennis Douglin, I mean, Paul Smith said he looked like a welterweight last night. I think that's a bit harsh, but to my eye, he looked like a light middleweight. This is a guy who's been stopped twice at light middleweight, and he took George Groves deep into the fight. He had spells of effectiveness in the fight. He hurt Groves. He cut him badly. And why did that happen? It's because Groves gave up his advantages. Groves didn't use his reins with the jab. He didn't use his feet. All he did was stand in front of Douglin and get involved in a messy, scrappy fight. There wasn't the clean work, footwork, combination work. It didn't exist from George Groves. And my worry is, Groves is someone now, I'm not convinced by his chin at the elite level. I'm not convinced by his stamina at the elite level. If he's starting to lose attributes... You know, such as his foot movement, such as his speed, such as his power. If he's regressing in those areas, 
it's going to be very, very tough for him. I mean, let's put it this way. The George Groves who fought Christopher Brass and fought Dennis Douglin is probably too hittable to beat Darrell. He may have success against Arthur Abraham if they choose to go down that road. But against a younger, smarter fighter like Darrell, it's going to be hard. I mean, Douglin, who's a much smaller man, was not only roughing Groves up on the inside, he was also catching Groves with the jab. You know, Groves wasn't elusive. And when he goes in against uh, Anthony Darrell, who's a more powerful puncher, more advanced fighter than Douglin, it's going to be a very, very hard night for Groves. Unless he can sow some of those capabilities he sowed into the Gale fight, the Frox fight, the Smith fight. If he comes and stands in front of Durrell and is hitable like he was against Rebras or against Dennis Douglin, he's in for a world of trouble. Now, let me give you an example of what I'd like to see from Groves. We saw James de Gale fight Marco Antonio Paraban, a massive, massive super middleweight. It looked like a light heavyweight in there compared to Douglin, who looked like a light middleweight. I think most would agree with me when I say that I would back Marco Antonio Paraban to comprehensively beat Dennis Douglin. Paraban is a better fighter, a stronger fighter. But in bigger fights, you know, Paraban is just a more advanced fighter out of the two. But James DeGale used his assets to look destructive in there. The speed was there. The footwork was there. The combinations were there. The Gale's got that inside and outside game. He can work the body and the head. He's versatile. Like George Groves, the Sony can be in the past. And he is effectively relying on his higher levels of sort of technical ability and natural attributes to score wins. Whereas George Grove is kind of giving these attributes up. There was an interview with Carl Frotz after the fight. Where Carl Frotz said that he'd been cobra Similar to Lucien Boutet. You know, this idea that the fights against Carl Frotz were so devastating. It took so much out of Groves. That he's never going to be able to recover as an elite level fighter. Perhaps there is some of that. It's not impossible. Look at Jeff Lacey after the BT took at the hands of Joe Calzaghe. I think sometimes a fight can be so devastating that it leaves a scar on a fighter. Perhaps we saw that with Nathan Cleverley. He was so scared of getting hit by Tony Belly after the Kovalev fight, he refused to throw a right hand. Has the Frotz defeats left the mental scar on George Groves? You know, has it meant that he prefers to fight inside a phone box, you know, fight in close quarters, hopefully it doesn't expose himself to the same risk, I don't know. You know, maybe the Carl Frost defeat has taken a lot out of him. It's not impossible, I wouldn't rule it out. But in my opinion, it's less likely that he's been cobra and more likely that he's been boofed. I mean, Adam Booth is known as the sort of tactical mastermind. In many ways, I think the job Booth did with Groves is similar to the job Booth did with David Hay. I mean, if you look at the uh, Hay Valuer fight, there are elements of that fight that are reminiscent to Groves the Gale. You know, sort of staying on your back foot, almost rushing in, ambushing, trying to steal rounds on your back foot, etc. If we then look at the way Groves was effective against Frotz in the first fight, and I appreciate that Paddy Fitzpatrick was in his corner that fight, but Groga, you know, Booth had still been working with him up to relatively recently. You know, the sort of counterpunching style, the kind of you know, weight making Frotz miss and then hitting back. For me, that was classic Adam Booth fighter, and he's just he's just really lost that for the time being. He's he's not using those sort of advanced tactics and. I wonder, is it to do with having a lesser trainer, certainly a lesser experienced trainer, doesn't have the, the high level championship experience of an Adam Booth? Uh, I'm not saying Groves needs to go back to Adam Booth, but is it affecting him that you know he's, he's not got a, a formidable trainer in his corner? Is it affecting him that he lost to Carl Frotz in that manner? 
you know, is it affecting him that he's got too much on outside the ring now, being a celebrity, managing a stable of fighters, etc., managing himself? You know, it's there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff up in the air that could be a contributing factor. But for me, the George Groves last night, you know, he's too too limited a fighter to be a world level world champion. You know, he'd have a shot against an aging Kesler, against an aging Abraham. I'd sway towards Anthony Durrell beating him. I'd certainly be confident that Andre Durrell and uh, James DeGale and Andre Ward would have his measure based on the performance last night. Uh, for me, this is possibly Groves' worst performance for a long time. I think this was worse than the Brass. I think it was worse than both of the Frotz fights. I know he won this fight by KO and you know the other fights were either losses or points wins. But for me, he was so hittable. You know, so one-dimensional. And essentially, he got through the fight in the end because he does carry some natural power because he is a bigger man. And that did tell. But after the first three or four rounds, I actually thought there may be scope for Groves to lose this fight. I thought I never thought that was likely to happen, but I thought there may be scope. Um, two hits ball. Where is the sort of versatile tactics? Where is the sort of different facets to his game? Disappointing performance, and we need to see a vast, vast improvement if he's to become a world champion.